Asalaamu As Alaikum and welcome to this week's episode of the Global Dawah Movement Show. I'm joined in the studios with Amran Hussain. Asalaamu Alaikum Brother Salim. Asalaamu Alaikum Salam. How are you doing bro? Very good. I'm good, I'm good. Today's topic, what we're going to be discussing, is a really interesting topic. Has science buried God? Okay, very good. The topic itself, first we need to mention why we're covering this topic. It's because this is a narrative or is one of such narratives which is out there currently today, which is the idea or the attempt to put science up against God, right? And Islam in many cases as well. Now the idea is, you know, sometimes it's promoted in a very aggressive way, which is the narrative is science has buried God, you know, we right. don't need God anymore, we have science and it explains everything. Another way of looking at it is, the, is a softer way people, some of the atheists put it is that, well, we have science now, do we need God, mm. right? So we're going to address this and we're going to highlight why it's a ridiculous idea, it's a ridiculous concept and it's a ridiculous narrative which has no legs to stand on. Fantastic. I mean, when it comes to sort of the nature of God and the nature of science, is there a difference between the two? That's the first point we're going to cover, right? And the reality is once we understand the nature of God and the nature of science, that's all we actually need to break down this whole narrative right because right? what you see is that they're not mutually ex exclusive right they okay. don't they, they're not but the, god does not but, but heads with science if anything science is a blessing from god because it leads us his worship we're going to go into this right. through the show but the question you've asked is the nature of the, the two realities firstly we know the nature of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala god god is not physical he created everything that exists but he's not a part of his physical creation right, right? God cannot be physically quantified in any way, shape, or form. God is not made up of parts. Yes. God is unlike anything we can imagine. As right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Laysa kamithli yes. He's unlike anything you can imagine. Right. right? Okay. So we don't from an Islamic perspective, we don't we don't belittle God. We don't turn God into we don't anthropomorphize God, right? We don't have a, a human conception of God. Right? right. We don't we don't we just don't we we, we understand and we, we appreciate the reality that God is beyond our imagination, beyond anything we can imagine. Right. And he's greater than all and everything. Absolutely. Right? Science, on the other hand, the nature of science is that it's a method and it's based on what's observable. Yes. Right? For example, Bertrand Russell says, well, science is an attempt to discover by means of observation and reasoning based upon it, particular facts about the world. What he's essentially saying is that science tries to discover facts about this physical reality, our physical universe. How does it do it? Through observation, through empiricism, through using the senses, right? right. Through sense perception. So we use our, set, our eyes, our, uh, our taste, our ability to touch and see and all of these things. And we observe the world, we collect observable data, and then we reason upon the data and come to our conclusions. Understanding the nature of these two realities, you can see God is not physically observable. Science is limited to what's physically observable. Yes. Therefore, science doesn't have a foot in the door when it comes to proving or disproving God's existence directly, at least. Right? Yes. Indirectly, we can ask the question, well, what science shows us as observations, when what we learn through physics and so on, what does it point towards? Right? God or no God? But that's a different question. The point is science cannot directly prove or disprove God's existence. Fantastic. And, and what's important as well when we, when we talk about science is <clears throat> when we look at the traditions of the early scientists, they were all theists. Yes, they were believers in a creator or higher yes. power. And this is a very good point because we have to look at history, right? Because there is this idea out there that supports these narratives, which is that you can't be a good scientist as people like Richard Dawkins put that you can't be a good scientist if you believe in God. It's absolutely ridiculous, right? If you look at the founding <coughs> forefathers of the method itself, Ibn al-Haytham, yes. most famous probably amongst the bunch, he was a Muslim, he was a scientist, Right? And he was a scientist par excellence, he knew what he was doing, he wrote a book on optics. He's considered by many Western historians as the founding forefather of the scientific method. Yes. Right? He was the first one to bring <coughs> calculations, um, mathematics, observations, bring all of them together and string them together and give us what we have, what we call today as a scientific method. Right. Right? We had the likes of Jabir ibn Hayyan, a chemist from Kufa. Yes. Right? He was laying down the foundations of chemistry centuries before. Robert Boyle emerged mm. on the scene, right? And Robert Boyle we hold today as the, the founding forefather of chemistry. Well, no, when we look into history, you see Jabir ibn Hayyan, he was doing the work centuries before, right? right. You have the likes of Abbas ibn Farnas, right? He was an engineer who's carrying out practical experimentation in flight, again, centuries before anyone else any, in any other part of Europe was doing the same, right? right? So the point is that these were great scientists and believers in God yep. and, and followers of Islam. And, and, and it's important to, to point out here as well, um, it doesn't just um, restrict, it's not just restricted to just 
Muslims. So yes. You have great scientists from Europe, such as yes. Kepler, Galileo, Newton, who were all theists. Give credit where credit is due. <coughs> when the scientific revolution took off in the rest of Europe, we had great scientists, like you said, Galileo, uh, Kepler, Newton, Faraday, so on and so forth. Yes. All of these individuals, again, believed in a creator, higher power. So what does this show us? At the very least, what this gives us or shows us is that you can be a believer in God and it does not affect your science in any way, shape or form. Mm. I personally would argue that science itself is a tool which leads you closer to God and leads you to the worship of God. Right. And I believe science is a blessing. Right? And if we have time, we'll discuss why in the end. But in a nutshell, why I say this is because God, for example, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God, seldom does he try proving his, his existence. What mm. he does instead is he takes us from his existence to his worship. Yes. One strategy God employs is by directing us towards his physical creation. Tells us to observe. For example, in the third chapter of the Quran, Allah says, Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, in the alternation of the night and day, in it are signs for people of understanding, those of understanding. Yes. So God is telling us to use our reason and observe the physical reality. Have you not seen the camels and how they were created? And paraphrasing, and Allah again tells us yes. to observe, to look. Because when you observe the physical reality, it leads you to the appreciation of the Creator that ah, put everything in motion. Yes, yes, yes. Right? It's a very powerful concept from that perspective. Right. And it's again, this is just another uh, way we can look at things. But going back to the point of science buried God, the real problem, Brother Slaudin, is I believe the problem of scientism mm. and not science. And it's the ignorance of people, of us, that certain new atheists, new atheists online are yes. preying on, right? Yes. They're blurring the lines between scientism and science. Like right? Harris and Dawkins. Yeah, of course. Dawkins, for example, says God is a scientific hypothesis. No, he isn't. Mm. Sam Harris wrote an entire book trying to, uh, trying to justify moral values and duties and connect them with science, right? Yes. Why do they do this? Because the internal lens is of scientism. Mm. Because they uh, hold the view, and scientism means the idea that science is the only way to truth. They hold the view that if you cannot, at least internally, even if they don't come out openly and say it, that science is the way to truth. Yes. If we cannot scientifically validate something, we can't believe in it. Therefore, they try to bring all of these other realities, such as moral truths and values mm. and duties, yes. and try to scientifically justify them or account yes, for them, yes, which yes. is ridiculous. Right? We know science is amoral. Yes. So the point being scientism, the idea science is the only way to truth, is the problem. Right. Because we know it's not the case. Right, right. If that was the case, you would have to reject moral truths, logical truths, mathematical truths, and the list goes on. Yes. Also, the claim itself, science is the only way to truth, is not a scientific discovery. Mm. You cannot empirically mm. justify the claim. Absolutely. So if, si if, the, if the claim, if the idea science is the only way to truth was true, it would be false. Mm. It's self-contradictory. Right, right, right. It's self-refuting. It doesn't yes. make sense. And this is why I believe many of these new atheists... They don't come out openly say I ascribe to scientism, mm. but internally that's the lens they observe reality through. Wow. I mean, that's, that's amazing. And you know, what I would like to say, I think that was really beneficial for our viewers. So in conclusion, what we've talked about today is that the nature of God and the nature of science is different. Yep. You can't use science to disprove or prove God's existence. There's a Directly at least. Directly. Yeah. Um, also, there's a difference between scientism and science itself. Yes. And even like, you know, when we look at the tradition of scientists in, in the past, we have a long, uh, rich history of, of, of scientists being theists and yeah. believing in God. So there shouldn't be a problem with someone believing in science and believing in God. In fact, as you stated in, in the show, that science should bring you closer to God. Yeah, just on an end note, just to connect the dots, yes. finally, is that Islam in particular promotes the use of science as a method. Yes. As we've seen, God encourages us to observe reality, right? right? Why? Because this leads us to His worship. From the Islamic perspective, engaging in the sciences makes sense. Mm. Yeah. It, it, for example, and for many other reasons, right? It, the Prophet said every disease has a cure, yes. right? And I'm paraphrasing, Absolutely. but the point is this, as a Muslim scientist, it will encourage him. He knows the cure's out there. All he has to do is find it. Yes. Whereas an atheist, on the other hand, he goes and decides maybe there's a cure, maybe there's not, mm. right? See, it's, it's, it's an empowering position to approach yes. science from the Islamic perspective. Yes. As Muslims, we need to engage in the sciences and reclaim some of our traditions. Yeah, back. we need to take back the science from, from, from these... Uh... Not take it back. Everyone has the right to do the science. But what we're saying is that Islam, the way Islam encourages the science and promotes it and, yes. and, and can account for it, yes. no other traditional way of life can do. Jazakallah khair for that, Imran. Jazakallah khair. I hope you guys enjoyed, uh, enjoyed the show. Please join us. And next week for next week's Global Dower Movement Show.